Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a revive option in your Buildbox game. And here's how it's going to look. So when you hit something, you get the revive screen. You click on that revive screen, you get invincibility and you continue where you left off. The score is skipped. Also, the way I set it up is that you can use that revive option only once. After you use it, the next time you get your game over screen and you have to restart. So in my game, I created a revive screen. And this is the setup with UI screens, how it looks in the mind map. So usually your game is gonna have a UI, which is displayed during the game. And then you have a game over UI. The game over UI might be inside the 2D world, if you use menu jumps, or if you're using the event observers in UI, you might have the game over in your UI screen. And if you haven't implemented revive logic in your game, then you would have game over connected to your game over screen like that and you don't have a revive screen. Now, one of the ways you can connect a revive screen is you place it in between your game over and your game over screen. So before you load the game over screen, you load the revive screen. And in this revive screen, the two outcomes that you can get, either the player gets revived, which in that case, what you want to do is go back to your UI screen, and that will let you continue your game. And the other outcome of the revive screen is restart and the restart would go to your game over screen. And from there you have the option of restarting the game. So how the revive screen looks inside is we have current score or bet score, just like we have in a game over screen, except here we have tap to revive, and then we have a label for our timer. And also we have a control button in the back of our screen. We also have an asset for all the logic of reviving. There's gonna be a link in description where you can download this asset. Inside here, it uses standard nodes that are available with Buildbox, except the value to label, but in the new version, there's set to UI text, and you can use this node instead of our custom value to label node. We're not gonna go through all the details of the whole setup, but a quick overlook. We have variable load and variable save, and the logic that is connected to variable load and variable save is the one that blocks you from using revive multiple times during the game. Then here is the timer that we have. And if you want the revive option to be shown for longer or for shorter, you can change the timer here. And the time value gets passed to the value label. And the value label options that we have here is label type, we use UI. And label name, we use timer. And that's the label name for our label that we have inside our revive screen, the timer. So here is our UI button. And for our revive button, we use the revive control button. And when the button is pressed, that's when we stop our timer and launch our reward videos. Now you can only test the reward videos on your phone. So if you want to test this logic in your preview, you'll need to disconnect everything from the no ad and then create two connections to send, that is right here, and to revive menu jump. And this way you will be able to test the logic in your preview. But make sure when you're done testing to connect it back to restart and single invert. So inside this revive logic, we have the restart UI and the revive. And that's the outputs that we see in our revive screen, revive and restart UI. Now, all of this logic is to control the UI. But most important part is how we control our world once we revive. And this is what this send node is for. This send node sends an event and the event group that we have is game and event name center. And in our 2D world, we can use a receive node to perform certain logic so that we can continue playing your game. And this can vary from a game type that you're creating. In my case, the way you get defeated is by colliding with something. So that means that when the collision happens, it either hits the top, bottom, or one of the enemies. And then we have an explosion. So inside a player, if we take a look at the defeat logic that we have here, on collide, we trigger the defeat node and a debris explosion. The defeat node has set physics connected to it. And that's so that we can stop all the movement and we switch the physics type to none so that the player won't continue moving. And also we set a color to transparent so that the player will disappear. And now when you click revive, we need to set physics back to dynamic and switch the color back. And that logic is right here. So we have a receive node. We pass the value through a single filter to make sure that we only get true. And here we have the logic for configuring. So we have set physics to configure it back to dynamic. And we have a loop here that goes from semi-transparent to full color. And that's to display that you're currently invincible. And we make the player invincible by turning off the if collide. And the last thing that we use is the position animation. 
Now we use the position animations to set our player back into the middle. That's why we only set a Y to 8. So we're just using it as set position. And the duration is 0 seconds. To disable the invincibility, we have a delay that we use, and that delay turns back on the GIF Collide, and also turns off the blinking of our color by resetting the delays. That's pretty much it with the setup, and one more thing that we had to do for our gameplay is to go to our enemy and use the same receive event to disable the physics for our enemy. When we receive, we switch it to none. When the invincibility stops, we switch it back to static. And that's so that the player can pass through the enemy when he's invincible. Otherwise, if he collides, he'll be just stuck behind the enemy. So that's the setup that I use for this game. If you found this video helpful, click on the like button. And we'll see you in the next one.